moving on to question number nine. Uh, the statement reads let a and b be positive integers then a procedure remainder which takes two parameters a and b returns remainder if a is divided by b so when we put this remainder a and b and assign it to a value let's say c so what happens is that c would now have the value of the remainder if a was divided by b uh, so let's go into this procedure so the name of the procedure is do something which takes a parameter x so x is a variable an integer uh, what it does is uh, then we also have a variable called j here which is assigned the value of 2 and there's a flag uh, it's a boolean variable because it only can have two values that is either true or false and in this case the value is true it also says if x is equal to equal to 1 that means if the value of x is 1 then we return false directly so that's one thing we need to be on the lookout for because if we give x is equal to 1, well, uh, you'll directly get a false. Then what happens is, if it's not 1, we go into this while loop. Uh, the while loop, in the while loop, what we do is we see that as long as the value of j is less than x. So what happens then? We say that if the remainder of x, comma j. So what does that mean? We already know what does remainder here do. Remainder it does. It just gives you the remainder when the parameter a, in this case x, is divided by another parameter b, which in this case is j, and we get the remainder of that. And if this particular remainder is 0, then the flag gives false, or the flag becomes false. We assign the value false to the variable called flag, and then we directly exit the loop. So this exit loop statement basically means that even if now j was less than this variable x, we would directly exit this while loop and come here. So what we will do is we will return the value of flag. Uh, so what happens after that is as long as we don't enter this if statement, that means as long as the value of remainder is not 0, what we do is we increment the value of j and how long do we do that? until the value of j is less than x once the value of j becomes even equal to x because we know that this is a less than sign so which means that as long as it is less than x we will keep on incrementing the value of j we will divide x by j and see what is the remainder and at the first instance that we see that uh, x is completely divisible by j which means its remainder is zero the flag is going to be false and we then return the flag and then we end the procedure. So now what does question number 9 read? So it reads that when will procedure do something return true? So what do we know? We know that flag was initially given the value true. The variable flag was initially assigned the value true. And it will only return false if the value of x was either 1 or if x was divisible by any number we know that when does the remainder of two numbers a and b be zero only when a is completely divisible by b so only in that case can we expect the value of x and j or a and b to be zero so in that case the value of your x it should not be equal to one and x should not be divisible by any number between 2 and itself uh, pardon me not itself but a number just preceding itself so it should not be divisible by any number between 2 or the number just preceding it which means that this this particular number x should only have two factors which is 1 and itself. So does this sound familiar to you guys? This is in fact the case of a prime number. Only a prime number is a number that is divisible by 1 and itself and no numbers in between. That means for procedure do something to return true x should actually only be a prime number 
in all other cases the variable flag is going to be false so that is the correct answer for this question which is option a x is a prime number now moving on to question number 10 it reads consider the procedure discussed above which is this particular procedure that is valid for questions 9 and 10 uh, and it says that what will the value of m be at the end of execution of the given zero code below so this zero code reads that you have a list l with six integers 6 10 11 23 7 and 50 and you also have a list m which is an empty list you have this variable called position which is initially one then we go into a for each loop and this for each loop is says that for each element in l so we are iterating through this list l then it says if do something in brackets it says it says position and do something in brackets it says element m is equal to m plus plus element so basically what we do is we are appending that particular element that particular that particular element inside the list L to this empty list M and uh, then once we come out of that loop we increment the position by 1 and then the loop is continued so we keep on doing this until we have run out of uh, let's say positions so now uh, we keep on doing this until there are no more elements in L so which means that let's say we start with the first element or the first position that is 6 so what we do is we know that this thing called do something we know from the previous question that only if x is a prime number do we get true so and we know that in an if statement all the conditions within the if statement should finally come out to be true only then do we go inside the if statement so this is a very basic knowledge so we should know all this so only if the if statement let's say if the conditions are connected by and we know that all the conditions should be true for the final outcome to be true which means that only if the final outcome is true can we enter this if statement so which means that do something of position that means this particular variable which starts from 1 and do something of element that also is this particular element okay so what we do is we need to say that both the position and this particular element within the list l both of them should be a prime number only then do we append this particular element so whichever position that we are in whichever position we are in in the list that particular element would be appended to list m so what we usually tend to do is we just we know that what this procedure does do something we know that it returns uh, true only if it's a prime number and you know uh, maybe uh, sort of overconfidence comes seeps in and then we put this option B as the correct answer why because we know that 11 23 and 7 are all prime numbers but what we've got to do is we've got to give it some time we've got to understand the question first so we are not really checking if the particular element in the list is a prime number we are also checking if a variable called position that has been initially given the value 1 is also a prime number before we jump to a conclusion so if I were to go here step by step okay so let me just write this list over here so the first element is 6 the second element is 10 the third element here is 11 the fourth element here is 23 the fifth element here is 7 and the last element which is the sixth element is the number 50 okay 
and then we have this variable called position. And that initially starts with one. Now, let's say in the first iteration, we have taken the first element in the list that is six. And the first variable or the first value of the variable position is one. Now, if I were to run this procedure on one, I would anyway get false because we know that from this particular pseudo code, this particular procedure, we know that if x is 1, we automatically get false. So, a false, pardon me, a false and a true would always give you false. So, in that case, you know that the first element is not going to be considered here. Now, the second element is 10 which means that once we have gone to the second element before that position is going to be incremented by one so now the new value of position is two and the new element that we're going to check for is 10. now do something over 10 means we're going to get it's not a prime number anyways so that's going to be false we also know that this value of position is false uh, because uh, two is not a prime number which means that a false and a false will again give you false. Now, when we take the third variable, I mean, pardon me, the third value that's going to be assigned to position and the third element within this list that is 11, we know that 11 is a prime number and we also know that 3 is a prime number. So, in that case, what's going to happen? We have 11, which is a prime number, which is going to return true. We have three, which is a prime number, which is going to return true, and a true and a true are always going to be true. So let me just write a list here for the convenience of the learners. And we know that 11 is one of the correct answers, or it's going to return true anyways. So it's going to be appended to the empty list M. Now we know that the next value of position is going to be 4. And I don't think there's any bother checking it because... 4 is not a prime number, but we know that 23 is a prime number. But now here it's a true and a false, which automatically gives you false. So we are not going to enter this if statement, we are not going to append that element to end. So 23 is not going to get appended to end. Now the next variable or the next value for variable position is 5. Now 5 is a prime number, we know that the next element is 7, 7 is also a prime number. So in this case it's going to be a true and a true, which anyways leads to a true, that means we're going to enter the if statement and we are going to append the value of 7 to this empty list m. And finally we have the final position that we're going to see for, that is 6. 6 is not a prime number, so this is false. 50 is also not a prime number, which is again false, which means a false and a false. You anyway get false, so we are not going to append it. So your final list is only going to be 11 and a 7. So that are those two numbers are the only ones that are going to go into M, which means that 11 and 7 are the only correct answers, which corresponds to option A. So the correct answer for question number 10 is option number 1 or option A, which is 11 and 7. So with this we have come to the end of the week 5 grade assignment solution video. I hope you guys have understood and learned something new this week and with that thank you learners.